Hello and welcome to A Cat in the Garden. I can't believe we are already basically through January. This is the last week of January and this year's already flying by. I, I thought it just began, but it's flying by. We are through the crazy cold front. We are looking ahead to spring. I've been focusing a lot on my outdoor garden recently, but there's still houseplants in here and I have been doing a lot better with the houseplants. This entire month I have been repotting. I have been on top of watering. I have started to redo the fertilizer on some of them because it's a six month fertilizer and they're all due for it, but I'm getting there and I'm just doing better. So the plants are looking a lot better. They're looking a lot healthier and that is just making it so much nicer to be in here and it actually made it very hard to pick my five favorite plants for the month but i think we did an okay job so i'm just gonna go ahead and get to it and start off with these these are going to be five that are just little triumphs for me this month when a lot of my plants are doing a lot better but these especially so the first one right here i know it doesn't look like much and it looks a little silly right now but I promise you, this is a big triumph for me. This is my variegated spiral ginger. This is one of two that I have. This is one of my original ones. And it basically turned into these two sticks. Actually, I actually have three. I have three. One reverted, that's why. So this is actually my second one. I got this one from a friend. It turned into the, the two sticks that you kind of see poking out here. And I was like, it's probably dead, but I kept watering it anyway. And then my mom actually, when she was watching my house while I was on my honeymoon, she watered it a lot more and it shot out this piece in the middle here. And I'm probably gonna have to put nutmeg down for the rest of this to show you all. But down here, let me see. Yeah, right down here, if you can see this little nubby thing right here that is a new growth point so it'll push those out every so often and that just made me so happy because that means that i'm doing a good job without my mom's help with this one so i'm pretty happy with it it's a very easy going plant i love how unique it is i love how resilient it is i love that it's just different from every other plant in my collection you know Philodendron are great, Hoya are great, Monstera are great, but I love having something different. That's just like a different genus, got a different name altogether. So that is why I absolutely love this one. And I love that I'm doing a lot better with it. I am wishing I did not put it in Chunky Mix because that is why it's so thirsty. So I did buy a third one last year and I have that just growing in moss and it seems to be doing a bit better right now. So I wouldn't recommend putting this in a Chunky Mix, but I'm making it work. So. I'm just gonna give myself props for that and just kind of celebrate this as a win because I absolutely love this plant and I wish I could grow it outside, but I don't think it would tolerate a freeze at all. So as long as I can keep it happy inside here, I'm gonna be happy about it. So that is my variegated spiral ginger. The next plant on my list I've had for maybe a year and a half and I still don't think I've shown it off, but it's doing a lot better now. Well, just kind of growing a lot quicker, I would say. It wasn't ever doing poorly, but this is going to be my Philodendron Red Anderson. So I got this plant back when they were actually really rare. I traded a variegated black velvet corn for it. That's how rare that they were. And I love it. I love it so much. It's such a cute little plant. This is a hybrid of the Philodendron White Knight and the Philodendron Pink Princess. I got it as a lightly rooted mid cut with two leaves and it has taken a long time to actually get up to this size. Like I said, I've had it for almost a year and a half now, I think. And I know it doesn't look like much, but I've had it in a prop box the entire time because it was so small, because it didn't have a lot of roots, because it took a lot of time and I'm being patient with it. I finally took it out of the prop box. I think pretty soon I am going to pot it up. I'm a little nervous for that, but I think it is due for a repot. And I think I'm going to give it a pole, something for support, maybe not quite a moss pole, but something that's going to support it so that it can grow bigger and healthier and not end up growing like a pink princess does. Because if you know me, you know that I hate the way that pink princesses grow. I hate the way that they just get the stuck leaves 
and they kind of get smaller. They don't get bigger unless they're in their ideal environment. So I'm really trying to avoid that with this little red Anderson. I call him Andy. It's one of the few plants that I have named in my collection, but I'm just so happy that he's here. I love him. I love him so much. He's got absolutely stunning variegation, honestly. It just seems to get better as this plant matures. So I could not recommend this plant enough. And they are a lot cheaper now, which is great for anybody out there who really wants one. I've always debated getting a bigger one because you can get them for like less than $100 now, but I'm just happy with this guy. So I felt like it was time that I showed him off now that he's living out in regular humidity. He really hasn't taken a dive or anything. This is one of the original leaves, so that's why it looks kind of poopy. But other than that, this is my, my little Andy. I'm so excited to finally share him. I feel like I should share him more, so hopefully you guys like him too. Next up is a Hoya, and I struggled with picking out which Hoyas to show because they're all doing so much better right now. But this is my Hoya Yetii Lori Lynn. So you might be used to the non-variegated Yetii or the Yetii that is inner variegated. This is a bit different. This is a bit less common. And I think it's prettier than both of them. I don't like the other ones. And I absolutely love this one. I love that outer margin variegation. I love how the leaves come in with these pink tones on them. That's just gorgeous. Or the fully white leaves just come in pink, which is fine. I'm gonna leave it be. It's got lots of other green on the plant to support it. So I'm not too worried about that at all. And it's just a steady grower. It's a happy plant. It tolerates my underwatering. And I just love it. I really think it's understated. I feel like it should be so much more popular than it is, but I feel like people don't really know about it. So if if the community knew what a wonderful plant this was, I think that maybe they would be as into it as I am. I don't know, do you like it? Do you like it as much as I do? This has quickly become one of my absolute favorite Hoyas. I'm thinking once it gets a bit bigger, once I can give it a repot, I'm gonna have it hanging up somewhere and have it trail. A lot of my Hoya, I'm trying to put on trellises, but this one doesn't really vine out too much like some of the other Hoya do that you really want to give that support. So I think it would do really well trailing, kind of like some of my Lacanosa. I have a pubic calyx and a Lacanosa snow caps trailing right now, and they're very happy with it. So I think this one would look really good next to them. I think it would do really well, be a nice statement plant to have hanging off of the ceiling or off of the shelf. And I just can't say enough good things about it. This plant back here is my, or not plant, this leaf back here is my favorite one. I absolutely love how it's just got that little streak of green right in there. And it's just so pretty. So this is my Hoya Yetii Lori Lynn. Next up is a plant that I have had since 2021. This was from my first trade ever with my friend Nez out in California. And I don't think I've ever shown it off on this channel. And I think I should change that because it's a great plant. So this is going to be my Philodendron Silver Stripe. I got it as a cutting in a trade with her back in 2021 and I kind of let it grow out a little bit and then I chopped it up so that I could make this full basket. I got this little hanger at Target in their bullseye section. It was $3 and at first I didn't really know what to do with it, but I think it's working really well with this plant. I have it hanging off of my garment rack that I have by my window and I have like little hangers attached to it that this just hangs off of and it does really well for me. It's got great variegation. There is one strand in here that has absolutely zero variegation right here, which is totally fine. We'll just kind of add some fullness to the plant. But other than that, it's had some times where it's almost had that philodendron gabby-like variegation where there's just so much on it and other times where it really is just a stripe like this, just a little stripe there. So it's got a really nice balance. It really doesn't revert on me at all except for that one strand, but it came that way, so I'm not really gonna be mad about it. This right here almost has like a Rio. It's really hard to show off. There's a leaf here. It almost looks like a Rio. 
you can kind of see it right there. So there's a lot of different variety to this plant. It is exactly the same as a philodendron green splash. There is no genetic difference between the two. So whether you buy it as a stripe or a green splash, you're basically buying it for the amount of variation on the plant, which is totally fine. I've also thought about maybe at times buying one of those and putting it in here just because the back is a little barren on this plant, but I don't know, it's growing pretty steadily. It's always been really happy. And I like that the leaves aren't getting smaller as it starts to trail. It's really reminding me of my big, beautiful Brazil that I've showed y'all a few times and it's just really easy going. I can't say enough about these basic Hartley philodendrons. I think they're gorgeous. I kind of hate calling them basic because I think they're so beautiful and they're so easy going and they do really well. Whether you're a beginner or you really just want a couple of statement plants in your collection or you are kind of a crazy plant person like me, I think they are a one size fits all kind of plant and I absolutely love it. So maybe I'll show it off a little bit more in the future. I have taken a couple cuttings from it before, but lately I've just been letting it grow out and I'm really happy that I am. So that is my philodendron silver stripe. Last but not least is a smaller plant, but it's one that I really cannot get enough of right now. And that is going to be my Hoya Patrawalii 023, also known as Isensis 23. If you saw my video of my last unboxing for 2023, that's when I got this one. This was from Sam's Hoyas. I got it in December and it has been growing ever since. So it shot up this vine right here. And I don't know if you remember, but there was a little baby leaf coming out right here. But unfortunately, it was growing right into this established leaf right here. So it died off. But I kind of figured that would happen anyway, so I wasn't too concerned, especially when it immediately put out this gorgeous splashy leaf right here. I absolutely love it. I love the splash. I love the thick waxy leaves, the black margins. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. The only thing that could make it more beautiful would be if it was full silver, but I would still want a splashy version anyway. This has quick, quickly become one of my favorite Hoya in my collection, and I really just can't say enough about it. It's so effortless, it's so pretty, it's beautiful, it's easy, and I've been taking extra care to keep it watered. I'm thinking now that it has gone ahead and grown a leaf for me, I'm going to go ahead and fertilize it soon. I haven't done that with any of these potted up propagations, basically, is what they have been from Sam, which is great, because I love being able to get wishlist plants at a cheaper price. So I think it's just time. I think it's time to put a few fertilizer beads at the top here and it has the drainage. So, oh my gosh, look at those roots. I haven't checked on the roots at all on this plant. Those are great. So I could even pot this into a bigger pot if I wanted to. I think I'm gonna wait till it's more root bound, but that's doing really well. I'm very happy with that. It's been growing in tree fern. I've really liked that. As a medium, you can kind of tell when it's dry and it needs water, but it's not sucking the life out of the plant like Fluval will. So it's just all around an amazing plant. And I'm so happy with this purchase. This was probably the purchase of the year. I am the most happy. If I didn't buy any other plant and I just got this one, I think I'd be really happy. So that is my Patrawalii 023. So that is it for my favorite house plants for January, 2024. Can't believe it. I still can't believe it's 2024. I know it has been for a month now, but I just can't believe it. So if you like this video, make sure to give Nutmeg and I a thumbs up down below and subscribe so you don't miss anything from us here on the channel. We've got a lot of new exciting things coming up, a lot of new things in the garden, and I've done a lot of work to this plant room that's on the other side of the screen and you can't see yet. So I will be unveiling all of that soon. So make sure you stay tuned. Thanks again for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.